Okay, are we uh, good to go? Are you there, Bill? I am. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> loud and clear, Bill. Good. Probably louder. I you're probably you may uh, not be great, but you're probably louder there than you are when you're in person. So, okay. So, so we'll go ahead and get this uh, workshop uh, called the order of uh, of the uh, November 10. The workshop obviously is regarding the lease revenue bond issuance of 2021A, and um, obviously let's let's do roll call since we have a uh, one member uh, doing virtual. Go ahead for roll call. Councilmember Lopez. Here. Councilmember Martinez. Here. Councilmember Johnson. I'm here. Mayor Pro Tem Roo. Present virtually. Mayor Dutre. I'm here. Thank you. So at this time, we have again the uh, workshop on the infrastructure projects, and this is a continuation of our meeting that we had about two council meetings ago. And I know that staff uh, has updated the presentation, so I'll ask staff in a second to update that presentation. I'll get to provide a pre presentation on the updates. I know members of the public, when they spoke uh, at the last uh, workshop, uh, they mentioned, I think the issues included um, um, alleys, uh, parks, and also uh, school crossings were the issues raised. I think there was about five or six uh, members of the public that spoke at that time. So the order of business today is that, uh, again, we'll get the presentation from staff first, and then I'm ready to go into the deliberation of this document for us to discuss it, go through it, and then, and then uh, if we have additional public comments, we'll, we'll take it at that time uh, before we give staff uh, final direction um, on, this, uh, on this document itself. So I'll start with staff, Ed, or Monica, whoever wants to take the lead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, pleased to note, Mr. Mayor, that based on what you said, all of those points have been included in tonight's uh, presentation. We think we've been very comprehensive in addressing uh, not only the comments from the city council, but from the public as well. Uh, we have, as you indicated also, we have stripped down the presentation this evening. It'll be a fairly quick presentation. We've essentially included only the Lease Revenue Bond Act related projects. Uh, all other projects that would be funded by other uh, potential funding sources have been removed so that we can focus clearly on those specific projects. You will see that uh, the total effectively reaches the full amount of uh, lease revenue bond money that is available, although we expect that during the course of the years as we move forward on these projects, some of them will come down in cost, some will go up, some of them will become uh, impacted by grant monies that are available, freeing up additional money for uh, other things for us to consider down the road. Uh, but in the end, we think that the lease revenue bond monies that are available is a sufficient amount for us to achieve uh, all of the projects that were uh, in, that were of interest to the city council, uh, as well as members of the community. And so with that, uh, Monica will quickly go through uh, the first few slides of the presentation to focus on those projects. <clears throat> Mayor and city council members, I'm excited um, to be here again to discuss in more detail the projects for the lease revenue bonds. Um, so I'll start with uh, the first um, slide in front of you. And basically, these are all of the projects, as Ed mentioned, that uh, will be used to <clears throat> uh, construct or build or design using the 2021 uh, lease revenue bond street improvement um, bonds. Uh, we have, uh, as you can tell, and you have a big map if you want to use it as a reference as well for where some of these projects are located. And uh, again, for purposes of presenting, I've, we're going to discuss in this slide the uh, projects in the northern part of the city. So we have Arrow Highway, and I don't have a pointer, <laughs> but uh, everybody's, I'm sure, familiar where Arrow Highway is. We have the streetscape project, the undergrounding. Uh, we have Benson to the right uh, from <clears throat> uh, on the right end of the city. Oh, oh yes, thank you. So thank you, perfect. So there's Benson over here. Uh, Central Avenue is not part of the um, LRB uh, funded projects, and that's why it's in red. The, uh, that project will be funded using RDA bonds. Uh, number five is the Mills uh, Avenue meeting and rehab, which is right here, 
portion of, of it shown here on number five. And number eight is the Monta Vista Median and Pavement Rehab, which is all of this right here. And um, I have more details in all of these projects in further uh, slides that um, you can take a look at what it entails as far as whether it's only design and what the project entails, whether it's like a streetscape project, adding uh, bike facilities and such. Uh, number nine is Palo Verde Street Median Rehab, which is right here. Uh, number 10 is Richton Street, which is up here by the Trans Center. Uh, Huntington Drive, right next to it, right here. Uh, number 12, the Freeman Avenue Streetscape in green over here. And 13, Marina Street Utility Undergrounding and Design, which is right below that. Uh, La Rambla, which is at the entrance of the Montclair Place. Uh, Marine, Marina Street uh, 13, right here. Anyway, so you can take a look at this. And um, the totals in this, uh, well, let me just go really quick. Uh, we have the modular restrooms as well, the alleyways throughout the city, citywide. And there's a slide in more detail about that. Uh, street striping program throughout the city and adding Richard Reflective uh, signal backplate striping to make our signals more visible. So in total, in this area, we're using 18, about 18.4, 18.5 million dollars. And on the next slide, covering the center of the city, we have again, the continuation of Benson, uh, Mills Avenue, Holt Avenue improvements, um, we're not including the road widening along Monta Vista, uh, shown um, in red here, number seven. And uh, again, but we will continue the design and improvements on uh, along Monta Vista, number eight. And 19, I forgot to mention that in the previous slide, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back. But number 19, we um, like to do a, um, a pilot project along the San Antonio Creek Channel worth about a million and see what that would look like. And there's a slide on that as well with a photo of what it would look like. So um, going back to this. So here we are going to, we have about 6.9 million worth of projects. And then on the southern region of the city, we have the Mission, Mission Boulevard uh, Meeting and Pavement Rehab and zones five and six, which you can't really see here very clearly, but on your slides, it's all of the yellow uh, highlighted roadways. So a lot of the uh, southern portions, the pave pavement there is going to get improved, which is great. And that is a total of 6.8 million. And then we have uh, park improvements. And so first of all, we need to start with the parks master plan. As I, as I mentioned last time, I am working on it. I have a rough draft. So as soon as this gets approved, hopefully tonight, then I can continue to, so we can determine what are the improvements that are needed in each of our parks. But in the meantime, we have some of what we already know, the improvements that we need at each of the park and they're listed here. Uh, but I do wanna mention that Saratoga Park, for example, we're only using um, 1.5 million uh, since we already have 2 million in grant fund grant funds for a total of three and a half million. And um, same with Reader Ranch, we are, that's actually all funded by the California Department of Parks and Rec. And then the county park, we are going to use 300,000 um, for um, the design of that park. So if I can elaborate on that particular park, we're in conversation with uh, the county and particularly Supervisor Hagman's office. In fact, he wants to set up a meeting with uh, city staff uh, to discuss the potential funding, not only for County Park, but for potentially other projects within the sphere of influence uh, that we can make improvements, perhaps uh, roadway improvements, that sort of thing. But uh, the county's stipulation in relation to County Park is that they would be willing to fund the improvements at this uh, property that the city owns on Vernon Avenue uh, in the city's sphere of influence. However, the county is asking that the city maintain uh, the park in perpetuity, and obviously we would certainly be willing to do that. So uh, these are all the improvements for uh, throughout the parks, and that's about seven, almost eight million. 
Um, as far as other infrastructure, um, as you can see, we have the some landscape improvements on Fire Station 152, the screen wall um, along San Bernardino Street, um, handrail improvements by the PD department in the design of the um, par public parking garage at the um, village at Montclair, about a million. So it doesn't include the total, the 12 million. Uh, and then we have allocated 3.3 million for safe routes to school. And I can um, elaborate a little bit on that. There's a slide of some examples of um, some of the improvements that we propose to do throughout uh, the schools in, um, in the city. So mostly a lot of signage, making improvements to just visibility, stop signs, crosswalk signs, that sort of thing. And the same with uh, local road safety programs. Um, we have 2.7 million that we can use to improve um, safety uh, through a record, throughout our major corridors or corridors that need uh, improvements. And that's about a 7.6 million. So in total, for um, all of these projects, we are going to use all of the funds. And that totals about 47.7 million. I can elaborate on the last three items, the public parking garage, the safe routes to schools, and the uh, safety program, systemic safety analysis. Uh, as it relates to the parking garage, as uh, Mrs. Herrera indicated, we are only looking at doing the uh, design related to the parking garage, and then we will seek other funding as it relates to the actual construction of the garage. In relation to the other two items, safe routes to schools and the systemic safety analysis, a number of uh, improvements that will be conducted to the city through the other infrastructure projects will address a number of the uh, improvements that were recommended by both of these studies, uh, and specifically the, uh, the signage uh, under the Safe Routes to Schools will be uh, very impactful throughout the community. This is probably more than enough to cover an extensive signage program, uh, not only at every school, but in every feeder street uh, that approaches the schools. And as it relates to the uh, sa systemic safety analysis, as you already know, uh, we've received a $750,000 grant to make improvements to Ramona Howard, uh, Ramona Street and Howard Avenue uh, with a uh, roundabout, and that will be going forward soon. In addition, we would be looking at grant opportunities for both of these programs as well. Mr. Mayor, before I forget my thought, may I ask the general, uh, city manager a question real quickly? Go ahead. Clarification, sir, on the um, parking garage. With respect to this item, you have here $12 million uh, estimated project cost in the $47 million. Um, you're only stating that $1 million will be used for the uh, project design and the analysis? Yes. Or, did you say that we would then seek additional funding? We would seek funding through grants and other sources. So the $12 million would not cover it all? No, no, the 12 million is what would be necessary to do both the design um, as well as the construction management and the construction, but we're not taking that out of the lease revenue bond money. We're only recommending $1 million to do the design. It'll take a, a year or longer to do the design, and in the meantime, we'll seek other funding sources for the actual construction of the project. To match the 12 million? No, no, 12 million would be the total. Uh, we would look for other grant sources as well as development of funds through uh, perhaps revenue enhancements that the city should enjoy over the next couple of years. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if I can add to that, um, a lot of grant funding uh, usually requires projects to be ready or shelf ready, and also uh, the, that could be used as a match, um, yeah. the design costs. Yes. Thank you. What I'd like to do at this point, I know there's the individual projects back here, and I want to go back to uh, maybe p page two, because we have $47 million to spend, 47.78 7 million to spend, 45 million from the, from the bond, and 2.78 million from the premium, and you're giving us a price tag of basically 47.7. Um, 47 so what I'd like to do is go back to page two and start this deliberation among the council and staff. Before we start that, I'll just let the public know if you wish to speak. Um, if you're obviously in the audience, there's the blue card, fill it out, and uh, the city clerk will, uh, will, will retrieve it. And if you're on Zoom or on the phone, uh, you either uh, raise your hand on Zoom or you dial uh, star nine on the phone if you wish to speak at the latter portion of the, uh, of the agenda. So. 
I want to start on page two. We can go back. Uh, you have page two already in the, in the PowerPoint presentation. And again, uh, I know one council bill, uh, Mayor Proton Rue is on the phone. So let's start with page two. Um, so maybe I'll do this. Uh, I'll start with my left. Anybody on my left have any questions on page two? Any questions, comments on page two on these projects? You need further clarification, concerns? No. Okay. I know that Mayor Pro Tem's not here, but I'll start with my right with uh, Councilmember Lopez on page two. Well, um, I don't mean to be beating a dead horse, but I, I am curious as to um, why the issue regarding the modular restrooms at the Trans Center is back up on this. This is separate from the one that was related to the um, Greyhound uh, Depot, correct? No, this is the same oh. restroom. It was already approved by the city council for lease revenue bond funding, so we're including this on the chart now to uh, indicate that the council has approved it and has approved the $250,000, so it would be one of the projects that would come out of the lease revenue bond monies. Okay. Do you have any further questions? No, no, not okay. on this portion, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Rue, do you have any questions on page two of the presentation? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only question I have would be perhaps on item number two, Benson Avenue median and pavement improvement, because Benson is a street that we do share in this neighborhood with the neighboring city. Would we be looking at them for any type of cooperation on this? Yes, we are only responsible for improvements on the uh, west side of the street from the center line right. in Ontario. Uh, at least south of the 10 freeway would be responsible for improvements on the east side and then north of the 10 freeway uh, it would be Montclair and Upland. So this particular section we are talking about working cooperatively uh, with both Ontario and uh, certainly Upland in, north of the 10 freeway. And would that uh, cooperation include any type of uh, maybe sharing in the cost of the project? Oh, yes, Upland and Ontario would have to pay for the, their half of the street. Uh, and typically, whenever we've approached the two cities related to joint projects, they have always been more than willing to cooperate with the city. So we anticipate that same will occur now. And if you drive Benson Avenue, you'll already see that it's in a very deteriorated state, except where Monta Vista Water District did some uh, paving improvements on the number two lane. Uh, on the Montclair side, uh, but even there, there's already been a number of street cuts in relation to uh, Mono Vista Water District having to go back and make repairs to damages to sections of the piping under the street. So, And we also understand that they may have to come back and do a complete rehab again all over anyway because they have some other uh, major issues that they are looking at as it relates to Benson Avenue. But uh, we will certainly work with all of the agencies related to making certain that Benson Avenue costs are shared equally between the two agencies, or the multiple agencies. Yes, I, I, I noticed because I do drive most of the streets in the city on an almost daily basis, but Benson is one that for most of my life I have driven or been on for, you know, almost every day. And I just saw that and thought, you know, there's a benefit to other cities nearby. So it's good to know they will be cooperating with us on that. That's the only question I had on those specific items. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Ben. Um, Back on that issue, the the it's listed as Benson Avenue median and pavement rehab. The only portion of Benson that has a median is north of um, Moreno. That's correct. Are, right. we, are we thinking of of creating medians below that? No, this would be only making no. the improvements to the section north of the Ten Freeway. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. And, and I will also say that when, with a median. And I will also say that when we get to the point uh, point of engineering uh, the street. We will evaluate whether or not those medians should stay or go as well, um, because they only do go a very short distance, and so uh, we'll take that into consideration. What about considering impl uh, installing medians all along the way? And the street is too narrow to support addition medians. We'd have to go to one lane both directions, and it's very likely that we want to put bike lanes on the street anyway, uh, and so that would limit our ability to put medians. Okay, so and I think in that area, because of the, and I'll touch on it later, we have in the Mon in below 10 freeway, a higher concentration of schools in that corridor than anywhere else in the city. I would be concerned that medians below the 10 might block people's view. 
Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead with some of my questions on page two. Um, so on the first two items, Arrow Highway and the utility underground, that's all related to, to North Montclair specific plan. Am I correct, Dad? That's the, uh, the enhancement to Arrow Highway. That's that's what that, that's part of. Yes, the the improvements to Arrow Highway as well as Fremont Avenue have already been right. approved by the city council, and funding has already been identified for those. That's not the funding that is addressed right here. So number one, Arrow Highway street, streetscape project is actually. Uh, the section that is uh, west of Monta Vista Avenue, that was not included in the project that the council approved. And then if you drop down and you look at the Fremont Avenue streetscape at number 12, that actually is referring to the undergrounding of uh, utilities as opposed to streetscape improvements because the council already approved that as part of the Arrow Highway from Central to Monta Vista and Fremont from Arrow Highway to Moreno. Um, and those funds are coming out of a separate uh, pot of money. So uh, the number 12 is really more related to uh, utility undergrounding. Uh, going back to separate pot of funding, I know number uh, three is the 4.5 million coming out of RDA bonds. Do we have any of the addition, any other RDA bonds available or all that's expanded? And I also know we had, when we did the uh, the bond extension, we had f uh, uh, money from that as well. Is that money still accounted for? This will be, considering the money that is being spent on Arrow Highway and Fremont, and then if we spend the uh, balance on Central Avenue, that would effectively eliminate the redevelopment agency bonds, uh, the, the uh, non-taxable redevelopment agency, uh, taxable redevelopment agency bonds. And what about the other bond money we had from the... Uh... That money has been going towards the uh, general plan update, and uh, there will probably be very little left over. Okay, so all the previous bond money pretty much will be done with uh, what, what's listed here. Well, you just mentioned pretty much will be all gone. On the RDA bonds, yes. And if you're referencing the 2015 issue of lease yeah. revenue bonds, that yes. money has all been spent out. Okay. Um, Monta Vista Avenue, number eight, that's from Arrow all the way down to Holt? Uh, well, for this particular section, it only relates right. to the northern section of Montclair, but this yes. this plan calls it for Arrow down to Holt in the plan. Yes, that's the Okay, just mm -hmm. uh, one of the... I just lost my mic. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. the, yes. Uh, your Monta Vista detail here was, uh, didn't, uh, should probably need to update the, uh, the description of the site. Um, number 11, Huntington Drive. Tell me again, I know we have a proposed, uh, we have a developer that is, is looking at of a proposed development um, at the old, old uh, rock quarry. And I know that part of the, the plan, the North Montclair specific plan calls for the extension of Huntington Drive coming from Mills Avenue and Claremont Upland going east towards Monta Vista Avenue. Obviously you have money here for, for design, but if that were to be extended, what needs to take place? I mean, is that something the developer will, will take that on, or that's something that we will need other external funds elsewhere to extend Huntington Drive? Yeah, so you'll see a number of projects that list design costs only, and that would be the cost that we incur in relation to hiring uh, our consultant to do the not only the design, but the engineering for the respective streets. And then in many cases, it will be the responsibility of the developer to make the improvements in this particular case from Claremont Boulevard to Monta Vista Avenue. Uh, as you know, we are engaging with Trammell Crow in relation to the development of the Vulcan site. They would be directly responsible for the improvements for the extension of Huntington Boulevard from Claremont, uh, of Huntington Avenue from Claremont Boulevard to Monta Vista Avenue. So they will be responsible for the full development of Huntington Drive from its where it ends now. Well, actually, not just where it ends. And what about the piece where the piece between Mills Avenue, the 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 existing piece between Mills Avenue and where uh, the the development will begin? There's 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 single family homes. The south side is Montclair, north side is Upland. What about that piece? How does that get negotiated? Yes, well, that remains to be negotiated with them, but it, it would be our intent that they actually work to try and acquire those properties, so that is still a possibility uh, to be discussed. But whether or not we can make a nexus uh, that they would be required to develop that particular section remains an uncertainty at this point, but it is our anticipation that ultimately uh, we would have to be working with San Bernardino County Transportation Authority uh, to develop that site. So that is an area that will remain uh, for us to consider, but at this point in time, until we have a clear 
uh, idea of what SBCTA plans on doing in relation to improvements along the uh, trailhead and the cooperation of the residents in that particular area is remains a little bit uncertain okay. at this point. Okay, thank you. And then um, the Santa Ana Creek Channel. So I know we have a million dollars set aside for a design. And uh, what's the total estimate cost? We don't really have that number at this point in time. The consultant uh, continues to work on uh, the entire length of the project. There are a number of issues that still have to be addressed. For example, how to cross the I-10 freeway, yeah. how to cross the railroad tracks. Uh, and then we have to have a conversation with the Chino Basin Water Conservation District. Our intent was that the entire length of the project would be on the east side of the channel. But Chino Basin Water uh, Conservation District, who was an earlier supporter of the project, has now appeared to back away. Uh, out of concern for liability. Uh, we disagree that there's a liability issue because there's not exposure to uh, people entering into the basin because of the fencing that exists. But in any event, it is a reality that we'll have to deal with with the conservation district. And it will have to be determined whether or not we'll migrate onto the west side at certain portions and then migrate onto the east side. Uh, but that is still part of the design. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have a uh, total estimated price at this point in time, but it's our anticipation that the bulk of the development will be through grants because the state of California highly welcomes these sorts of improvements and more often than not will fund the uh, bulk of the costs related to them. Thank you. And as far as the alley improvements, uh, $3 million citywide, uh, how much alley are we talking about with that money? Now, I believe that, uh, yeah, there is a slide on that. And so we are looking, as you can see here, there are eight that have been identified in good condition. Uh, 13 are in fair condition, 22 are in poor condition. So it would be our intent to focus primarily on the starting with the poor condition and working our way up. But also keep in mind that there are uh, community development block grant funds that can be utilized as well. And it's our intent going forward now that we are we believe that we are completed with uh, monies being expended on the reader property, that these monies will be committed uh, primarily to uh, not only the graffiti abatement related issues and code enforcement related issues, but the improvement of alleyways. So the $3 million is a start, and then over the course of subsequent years, we'll be bringing in the uh, CBD monies to continue making improvements. Uh, so it depends on uh, how much it will cost for each of the alleyways. The typical price will probably be about $150,000 to $200,000. So for $3 million, we can make improvements to quite a number of alleyways, but obviously not every alleyway in the city. But it will be based uh, on, uh, at least our recommendation, is to be based on working on the alleyways that are in the poorest condition first. Great, thank you. Okay, I have no more questions. How about page Anybody else on page two? If not, page three. Any questions on page three on my left? Good question. Page three. How about my right? Any questions on page three? Real quickly, Mr. Mayor, back on the alleyways. In determining which ones are in um, most repair, um, has the study already or that process already begun in identifying those? Uh, yes, there has been a, a, actually there's been an evaluation over the course of years, and this is an updated evaluation, so I believe this one has been recently completed. Uh, yes, those are, that's why you have recent numbers on which ones are in uh, good condition, which ones are in fair, and which ones are in poor condition. Um, but definitely there's other means to determine um, priorities as well. Um, so. Uh, based on uh, analysis of the pavement, so some could be where it's we it needs a total reconstruction, which I believe most of these are, and those will be very costly. I do know that we we repaved several of them. Mm -hmm. For example, north of on the north side of uh, I believe it's Harvard between Monta Vista and Helena. That one was already done. Yes, looks great. On the south side where I live, that has not. I know that in many different pockets of town, that is the case where some have been completed and some haven't. So I'm assuming the ones that haven't, depending on your guys' analysis of which are more uh, in a horrible shape, will be priority one, I'm assuming. Correct. Thank you. And just, I'm, I'm going back to the alleys, too, on the, uh, the three, uh, the p very poor. Uh, oh, go to that slide. Sorry about that. 
No, no worries. For a minute there, I thought I was doing that. Alley improvements, yes. <laughs> uh, just real fast, uh, the, the has the staff done the evaluation now, or this is a prior evaluation? No, this is a recent mm -hmm. one. I asked recent. our staff to go in and um, look at all of the alleyways and make a determination based on. So you see the picture on the top left is what we would consider uh, an alley that's in good condition, so something that we recently completed or the last five years. And then 13 are in fair, which is the one on the top right. So you can see the pavement's still decent. There's no drainage issues. And then on the uh, bottom one is where the pavement is crumbling. And you can see that right. all of the water is infiltrating that's causing yep. all that uh, pavement to uh, break up. Let, let me ask then the alleyway that I brought up between on the south side of San Bernardino between Monta Vista and Helena. Um, is that one of the 13 that are in I, negative condition? I or? didn't bring my map okay. with me, right. but I have it in my wall in my office. That's fine. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a question on alleyway. I don't Go have ahead. a way here I, to raise my hand, otherwise yeah, I'll try. Yeah, that's fine. You can interrupt us. We're fine. You're fine. Go the, ahead. I just have a question on alleyways. There is one south of San Jose between Benson and Del Mar. Is that on the list? I'm sorry, I apologize. I did not bring my map with me. Okay, I can email so, you tomorrow. Don't worry sure. about it. Thank you. And, oh. and I do have one in my office if you want to take a look at sure, it. I'll, I'll just, don't worry about it. It's okay. okay. Bill, it, it was on the list for evaluation. Uh, what condition it is, right. we can get back to you on. Yes. Right. Okay, it's, no, it's not a, a high priority right now. Okay. So as far as page three, uh, uh, Ben, you have any more any questions on page three? which is uh, Hope Boulevard is probably the only thing new here on page three. Uh, the, your, the widening project was removed on Monta Vista Avenue. No, I, I, I'm happy to see that the yeah. widening project is gone. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm i fine with, with what's on. Okay. Bill, you have any questions on page three? No, I'm fine with it. Okay, page four. Any questions on page four, which is South Montclair, Mission Boulevard, and the uh, Zone 5. So if any questions on my left on page page four? Any questions on my right on page four? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Denise. I'd like, um, Mr. Renia, can you please show us the Mission Boulevard and pavement we have? You have a slide for that? No, I don't. I'm, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I don't have that for. Um, but basically, I believe uh, there's sections of Mission Boulevard that were not repaved, and those are the areas that we want to address. Thank you. Can we go to page four on the slides? Right, page four on the slides. Here we are. Slide four. Any questions on? Oh, no, no, questions to my right. On just page a, four. Just a comment. I believe it was 2014-15 where the majority of street pavements began and were completed, and I believe it was the southern end that, um, the way I understand it, because I wasn't on council at the time, the money had was dried up. Here we are now having to uh, deal with the southern end. I, I just am glad to see that the southern end of town and those residents will finally get. Uh, what they deserve in getting their, their streets paved. I know they've been patient. Some of them have been vocal um, on social media and whatnot, but finally um, the time has come, and that's encouraging. So thank you to staff for this. No problem. Thank you. And then I know, Denise, uh, when we met a couple of days ago, you, you asked me about that area. Um, Polson. Polson which and I is, see it here. It's number it's 16, just to let yes. you know on page two. So Thank you, Mr. Um, Mayor. And I know that I know Central Bri the Central Avenue Bridge has uh, been removed. I know uh, Ed again. Just it's thirty million dollars, fifteen million dollars uh, we have already from a state grant, and then we are with Senator Padilla and Congresswoman Torres. We're trying to get the uh, the balance of the fifteen million, and so uh, based on this, uh, the bond funds are not needed. And the other project, obviously, is Ramon Howard, which is uh, that has also been awarded. Uh, the roundabout at that site there. Yes, that's correct. And, and I just want to remind you that in the event that issues like Central Avenue don't pan out, for example, if we only get $10 million and that takes us $25 million and we need another $5 million, we do have the opportunity in, 2000, uh, in 2024 to refinance the 2015 issue or 2020, uh, 2014 issue. And if we need to do that, which one, I think we should just to see what the interest rates are. 
But if we need to generate more money, then that would be an opportunity to develop additional funds to right. flesh out the remaining projects. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Then let's go on to the park improvements on page number five. I'll give everybody a chance to get to that page there and look at it real fast. And um, again, I'll start with my left. See any, any questions on the on the park improvements? No. How about my right? I, I, in all honesty, I'm confused on the amount that we were um, committed to receive through the efforts of Congresswoman Torres. What what amount did she secure for Saratoga? $2 million is our understanding. Now with the infrastructure bill having been approved, uh, what really occurs with the funding that was developed by Congresswoman Torres is that each member of Congress received a specific amount of money that they could designate for community projects. In her particular case, I believe she received around $12 million. She has committed of that sum $2 million. They were simply waiting for the approval of the infrastructure bond for that funding to be available. So this is money that's not earmarked money. Uh, it's money that is committed to each member of Congress for them to expend. So we believe that that money is now secured. We're simply waiting for the notification. And then of the two, the balance to do all the improvements is the 3.5. Well, 3.5 is the total, and of that amount, the lease revenue bonds would be kicking in 1.5 million. Okay. All right, I'm just wrapping my head around this. Thank you. And Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Ru, do you have any questions on page five uh, regarding parks? No, I'm glad to see the parks being improved. I wanted to commend publicly Congressmember Torres for her efforts on Saratoga Park. One may question and say three and a half million dollars, and we put in one and a half million. We're, we're receiving two million dollars. That's the bulk of the project. And I really appreciate her effort. She did come out to tour the park. She did look at the snack bar and that building. And I think it really helped when she saw a visualization. Some of us who go back far enough in the city will remember when that was part of the parking for the Old Valley Drive-In Theater. And Saratoga Park was built somewhere around the time the theater was demolished. So it's pushing 40 years of really no improvement. So I'm, I'm very pleased to see that the Congress member was able to do that for us. Great, thank you. And in, regard, in regards to, um, um, I know uh, uh, the city manager and myself will have a meeting with uh, Supervisor uh, Hagman regarding the county park and other improvements that he would like to do in the uh, unincorporated area of, Mon of uh, unincorporated area in Montclair Spear. Um, Essex Park and Reno Vista Park, they don't have a playground equipment at either parks. And I've been, uh, we had one resident spoke regarding Reno Vista and I've had residents in South Montclair about Essex Park. So I'm assuming these $2 amounts would include, uh, include playground equipment be added. Uh, yes. In fact, we were actually looking at Morena Vista Park for eligibility for a $5 million California Clean Acts grant. Okay. Uh, but because it isn't shovel ready, uh, we are not going to meet the timeline in relation to okay. making those kind of improvements to Moreno Vista Park. So yes, this money would be focused on uh, things like tot lots and, and other improvements, uh, particularly irrigation as well. And I appreciate that. Uh, and I also had a meeting with the Chino Basin Conservation District earlier this week and about um, their park on San Bruno Avenue, and, and they asked me for some suggestions, and I suggested one thing, can you put a playground equipment in there so at least families can go there and, and their kids can and utilize that as you know, part of that, they can have a playground, so they may consider that. Okay, so if there's no more questions on parks, we will now go to page six, and this is the other infrastructure improvements. This includes the Safe Route to Schools, and also local road safety programs. So again, I will start with my left and see if any questions on page number six. No? Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I really want to... Um, this is the Tinnies. Um, I want to hear more about the safe routes to schools and what exactly does that entail. Let me go to that slide real quick. Thank you. 
So basically what we want to do is um, use um, MUTCD signs to increase safety, and I just threw some examples in the slide. So um, such as flashing um, stop signs, flashing crossing signs, or a combination of a crossing sign and a stop sign, maybe um, uh, updating the speed limit signs that are flashing, and then even um, some that you, you see the um, the image on the right where it's a, like a flashing beacon at the crossing. So everybody's aware that there's a crossing there. And um, so that's what we plan to do throughout all of the school sites. And, and this would be all sites for, so for example, on uh, in front of uh, Montclair High School, uh, as you know, on uh, Benito Street, there is a mid-cross block uh, walk, uh, pedestrian walk path that doesn't uh, have any stop signs. So the kind of flashing lights that you see at intersections like that, or rather at crossing points like that, will go at that particular location. So it's not just elementary schools. Uh, it's not just uh, junior high schools. It will also be around the high school. And where a road is particularly wide, and there's an opportunity to locate a safe haven island, we will do that as well. Um, but it depends on the width of the road. So for example, Orchard Street might be considered an area where we could potentially put a safe haven uh, island, but that depends on whether or not there is already a left turn uh, either direction, you know, uh, east-west for them to turn left, whether or not there is already that configuration in order to put that kind of a safe haven island. But we'll be looking at that as well. Okay. I'm, I'm delighted that we are addressing so many schools because all of them need some attention. Um, but I'm hoping that there is um, one more sign that can be included in this. Um, even when, um, well, we know the school zones are, the, the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. But I, I haven't seen any stationary signs that say that. Oh. So you have to. It's, it's required by law. They have to be there. I well, I have, well, my eyes didn't see them. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, they're there. Cool. They're, they're, they're there. Okay. <laughs> right. They're there. So um, because, well, people, I guess people don't read them because they're still zooming. Yeah, well, sometimes the they get knocked out in, unless we're notified or we don't see, the, see them ourselves. You know, okay. sometimes that happens. But um, we're going to go through each of the uh, school sites to develop this program. So we're gonna notice those things. Perfect, thank you very much, Ms. Heredia. Of course. Okay, how about my right? Yeah, a few questions. First of all, with respect to the signage on Helena and Benito in front of Montclair High School, are we talking um, lit signage on the concrete like there is in, in Montera and, and, and also a uh, sign above ground? At that look, are we doing both or one? It'll all be above ground. So, for example, if you go on Benson Avenue where the Golden, Curl, Golden Girls crossing is and you have the flashing lights on either side, that's the kind that we're talking about. If there is also a safe haven island, then there will be a, a uh, flashing light in the center as well. Okay. Now, let me back up. The last time we were here, I understood that there was 100 and some 15 million that were on the proposed list of projects. And I know it had to be tailored and uh, cut down to meet the $47 million um, price tag. But with respect to safe routes to schools, in the last presentation we had, we had an estimated project cost of 25.25 million and now we're at 3.3. So that's an estimated cut in um, estimated cost for projects of 20, 22 million. My, I'm going to piggyback on my question I asked last time, and that is, of the 3.3 million, how are we going to prioritize which schools will be getting these additive signs first and uh, which won't? Is there a hierarchy or a uh, ranking of importance for each school, or... Are we going to just spread it even and just say we're going to get to every school at the same time? I ask that because I, I would say not at the expense or, or the um, uh, ignoring the other schools, just given the situation at Vernon Middle School and the um, persistence of parents to bring forth that issue, 
I would like to see that school be taken care of first with respect to added signs just to put them at ease. So that way, I mean, they've waited three years going on four now, and I can understand the situation given the, the casualty there. But again, how are we going to do that? And um, if it is signage, are any of them going to be the lighted signs in the crosswalk like there are at Monterra on Monta Vista? Uh, I'm just trying to understand how you as staff intend to implement the 3.3 million and spend it and what the priority is and what the plan is to proceed. Right, and uh, Vernon has been designated as our pilot location, so we are going to put the signage there first, uh, not only at that particular crosswalk location, but around the school. It'll, again, all feeder streets that feed into the school uh, where children are using uh, the streets as paths to school. So Vernon will be a pilot program. Doesn't mean that we will study it, for any length of time, but we wanted to certainly make certain that uh, the type of signage that we intend to use, uh, we want to observe how effective it is at that particular location. We do have to stay in compliance with the manual on uniform traffic control devices, so we can only use certain types of signs at certain locations. So when it comes to a um, controlled intersection with stop signs, you can only use a certain type of sign. So for example, the stop sign that you see here that has the flashing lights, yes. if you go to Howard and Ramona where we have that stop sign there, that is what we can use. That's all we're allowed to use uh, under the MUTCD at controlled intersections. But at other locations and along the pathway, we can use other types of signs. So that's what we will be doing. But we also believe that there is sufficient funding here to provide um, not adequate, but overly uh, uh, saturation, an oversaturation of signage around the, high, around the schools throughout the community. And, and as far as um, prioritizing, our intent is to uh, simply move as we can quickly to install the signs going forward. Because we have to do this in three years at least. At oh, oh, yes. This, the signage issue will be accomplished relatively quickly. And then um, we're on page six, Mr. Page Mayor? Page six. Um, I, I had thought we, unless I'm getting confused with another issue, with respect to Fire Station 152 and the, the landscaping, I thought we had a line in the budget for that, or is that what I'm thinking of the money? Was it 70000 for the plumbing in Station 151? You were, uh, you're thinking of a number of projects in both fire stations that are in the budget. Uh, the particular one here, the landscaping, was not in there, but the uh, restoration of the restrooms and the locker rooms uh, and the shower and plumbing improvements are all in the budget. Okay. And, and my understanding is that the... Uh, uh, Matt Paradise and his crew are moving forward with the uh, the issues related to getting those areas fixed. They've already gone to the stations? Well, I, I, the improvements haven't been completed, but they are sim certainly in the process of moving forward with it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Rue, you have anything on page? Yes, I have a couple of comments on the issues on safe routes to school. First of all, it... it to me, it's everything old is new again. And as many of you know, when I was a staff member to then Senator Nell Soto, this was one of the projects I was working on with her as far as legislation. So I'm glad to see that all these many years later, we are actually able to use it here in this city. When I look at some of these schools, I looked at concentration of schools in, on specific streets. If one looks at Benson Avenue, from the 10 freeway south to Holt, there are three schools that are directly on Benson Avenue. El Camino Elementary School, Benson and Fifth, which is Ontario, although it is a feeder school to Montclair. It's right there on Benson. One block south on San Bernardino, you have Buena Vista School. Then below that, two blocks, three blocks actually, excuse me, you have Kingsley School. School, three schools directly on Benson Avenue. There's no street in the city of Montclair that has a higher concentration of schools 
than Benson Avenue. If you tie in the students who may walk to Vernon from the Ontario portion over Benson to San Bernardino Street, that would be a fourth school. If you take the number of students who walk from Montclair over to Elderberry School, that would be a fifth school, although both of those are a bit more removed from Benson. We have one of the highest concentrations of schools on that street. I have gone to, I, I would also say the second concentration seems to me to be on Moreno Street where we have Serrano Junior High School and Moreno Elementary School. In all the schools I have looked at, we do need improvements. I'm glad we're doing them, but nothing will ever change the fact that parents need to be engaged. I saw on southbound Benson at Palo Verde, there was a stop sign. Parents stopped. The children exited the car from both sides. That's very dangerous. Children and all passengers should exit only curbside. The same thing at San Bernardino, where Buena Vista is, and I saw the same thing at Kingsley. This was not a one-time occurrence. This is a multiple-time occurrence. The same thing at Vernon, where parents just let their children out of the car at a stop sign. The same thing at Moreno, the same thing at Serrano. Parents need to take the responsibility to make sure they too are safe drivers. We can put up all the safety devices in the world, but the parents need to make sure their children are exiting curbside and right at the sidewalk. If it means getting to school a little bit earlier, then you get there a little bit earlier. Part of my frustration is that we are being asked as a city to do this and we should. But we need a commitment from parents that they too will be safe. If you're running your child into school at one minute after eight, you're going to have a problem. Try to be there early. Have no distractions in the car. While I was at Vernon watching, I saw a parent with a cell phone up to the ear trying to drive the car. Cell phones should be put down. They should be turned off. Radios should be off. No distractions in the car in school zones. That's just common sense. But in looking at that, it's good that we're, we are able to upgrade the safety areas around the schools. I'm glad to see we're doing this. I would appreciate if parents though would do a little bit of their part and really work on what they need to do as far as a driver. The other question I have is the local road safety program systemic safety analysis. Um, is that going to be citywide or is that only in certain areas? Uh, well, the money will be applied uh, judiciously citywide, but you have to keep in okay. mind that the systemic analysis called for a lot of uh, redesigning of streets, which yeah. would require right-of-way acquisition and a number of other issues. So its implementation really was not feasible, but what we believe that we can do is achieve the same results by a lot of the infrastructure projects that are already part of the lease revenue bond plan expenditures, as well as the safe routes to school uh, uh, improvements that we plan on making. So the additional money there is in relation to whatever other uh, improvements that are necessary related to the safe routes to schools and to otherwise enhance uh, improvements like the Ramon Avenue and Howard project to uh, act as a match or a supplement to grant dollars that we will be seeking. Thank you. Do you have a question? A follow-up. Uh, something that Mr. Uh, Rue had mentioned I want to bring up regarding Buena Vista and uh, Ben I'm sorry, Buena Vista and Benson. Has anything with respect to our efforts to try to address traffic, streets, and whatnot. Has there been a traffic study or any way to mitigate traffic at that location? Um, when I try to take my little guy to school on Kingsley, I'm stuck sometimes on San Bernardino. The traffic going east to Benson, um, and it, it, it backs up even in the right lane all the way to Vernon and it causes a huge um, huge backup of just regular traffic that aren't going to that particular school, and it's just a line of cars. It's like a parking lot for them. Are we looking at ways to try to mitigate that in any way with respect to any of these improvements? Because that is one school where it is pretty much heavily trafficked. Right, well, there's, there's not been a traffic study that's been conducted, but we're certainly aware of the issues and concerns, and the only way of really relieving that is to create uh, parking zones 
for vehicles for pickup and drop off of children, but then you're talking about right of way acquisition or you're talking about uh, breaking the street down to one lane either direction, and none of those really have a uh, beneficial uh, solution as far as impacting the issues that you addressed. So uh, we are certainly hoping that by making some of the infrastructure improvements that we are going to be implementing, and as including some of the safe routes to school signage, that that, that will have some impact. But unless we're really able to acquire right of way and create drop off and pick up zones, there's a little that we can do as far as that problem. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, yeah, what, go ahead, if Mayor. I may. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. I, just another item on my notes, sir, because I'm not at the actual meeting, it's more difficult for me to, to sort my notes out. But one of the things to look at on San Bernardino, we've had people say to us to put some type of a dock, docks or something like that on the median. Uh, the, the road itself, excuse me, to slow the traffic down. One, you're going to hear that if you live in a home. You'll hear the cars bumping up and down all night. Number two, because San Bernardino between Benson and Monte Vista is a route for ambulances, taking people to the hospital, Anything we do like that could impede the ability of that ambulance to get people to the hospital in a timely manner. And then just around the school sites itself, residents should be aware if there is a flashing light, they may see it flashing in their window. It may be at night. Just be aware of that. Because we do have one area of Montclair where there was a flashing light and I've had residents complain about it, yet they were the residents who asked that that light be put in. So just be aware of that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, on the local road safety program, Ed, is, does this all also include adding signs, flashing lights, et cetera? Be part of that as well, yes. And then uh, we talked about, uh, well, uh, the, obviously the report itself uh, calls for it, and then, and then and then we'll implement it. And then going back to the, to the safe routes of schools, I've had a chance to uh, visit all the schools, uh, some of them while schools getting in or getting out. I've also uh, get a chance to figure out where all the, the uh, school crossing guards are uh, between, the, between the ones on Montclair funds and the ones on Ontario funds. And so I've, I've been working on getting myself educated on this. So my, my goal has been on um, both the safety routes and the local road is let's get something started, you know, uh, as opposed to waiting to get $50 million. Uh, the, the plans, both plans, uh, uh, do call for signage, as we talked about here, and other simple stuff uh, to move forward. So my question to staff is, is uh, I know you talked about Ramona Avenue as the pilot project, Ed. Is that what was mentioned? Not Ramona Avenue. Um, Vernon, Vernon Middle Vernon. School. Near Middle School, yes. That we will start there? Yes. And when's, when's the time frame to start at Vernon? Do you have a time frame? It's going to be... I would be say by the end of the year. End of the year, first... We, we already have signs on order. You already have signs on order. So, yes. so my, my next question then is, um, um, uh, who's coordinating this, uh, these two safe routes? Is, is staff doing it or is, is staff going to decide, go through the reports, figure out which ones are going to get, get the priority? It's a combination of staff and consultants. Right, but um, so the safe routes to school goes into a lot of detail with the improvements and um, so signage is something we can do relatively easy and um, uh, but in that report there's also the uh, injury or collisions or right. or um, you know so I think by uh, looking at that report in detail and determining which which school sites are more you know they had more accidents for example yeah. that that's something we can look at and determine this you know the school site really needs to be done first like Vernon Vernon we, we had a tragic tragedy there had a tragic and error. so that's yes. why we're doing that first yes and then the report calls for some some uh, sign improvements there anyways um hold my thought so you know, I, I will say this, I was at Montclair, I've been at least two times at Montclair High School. That's very challenging to figure that part out because one of the problems is the high school students don't stop, they just walk, they don't right. look. Right. Uh, I think Rob Piperski knows all about that. Yep. Um, and then the other one concerns me is Montera. I know we have, yep. you know, we have flashing light, but 
I, I remember parents' concern when we first opened the, uh, the bridge on Monte Vista Avenue and reopen it, well, open the bridge on Monte Vista Avenue and, and the amount of traffic and the speeds. And, and so, uh, and that's gonna take a little longer to figure out too is Monterey. I know the report talks about it and there's probably more extensive improvements you need, you need on Monterey other than just putting some more signs up. Um, so I just I think Monterey is a, is a key one there too, along with Monaco High School, it takes some time. One, huh? Doesn't that school have um, flashing signs? Does have flashing signs, signs, yes. And a crossing guard, yes. But if you read the report, the report says that more should be done there, um, and perhaps the 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 lights in the cur lights in the asphalt are not very visible. And I don't. And so I think it talks about removing that. If I'm correct, and adding more, adding more uh, the flashing signs on the north side too, and there's no stop bar on the on the north side as vehicles are, as the vehicles are going from north to south at Bandura. There's no uh, there's no line to indicate where to stop. So, so but I so, think Mont go ahead. Yeah, sorry. we would look at all of those yeah. recommendations yeah. and um, see uh, you know what again look at each school site and see which one has the most or uh, most accidents or right um to prioritize them and then look at the list of recommendations and see what we can do with um signage like i because that is like the um least costly and and yeah. quickest thing to do to make it a little bit safer so what i like to do on these two safe routes in the local road and again i these are the two issues that i've heard much from the public uh, for a number of years and so what I'd like to do is come back at a different meeting workshop. I don't know when that's appropriate because I want to give staff enough time to go through this. I don't know if early next year works, but maybe February or March around there. Let's have this back in the workshop so we can concentrate on these two. In the meantime, um, you're going to start something, a pilot at Vernon Middle School. And I think yes. the council agrees with that. Everybody agree with that? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. I, picking back on what you just mentioned with respect to Montera, and then a statement by the city manager, I'm confused. If we're only allowed to put a sign, and I don't have the slide in front of me, the sign that has the stop sign, and it, that was lit, and it had a um, the uh, stick figures crossing. If that's the only thing, thank you, that's the only thing that we can put at um, school sites at these intersections, how is it then that Montera was able to get the lit pavement uh, flashing signs because I didn't know that there was a recommendation that maybe those be torn out. I think they've been helpful in trying to slow down traffic. I understand the problem at Montera. We're talking a much more traffic street like Monta Vista, faster speed, they're going downhill. Um, I drive it every day. Um, but I, I, what, what are the limitations in place that prevent us from doing at Montera what, what we can do, what we did there and why can't we do it at other school sites like Vernon? Okay, the, the stop signs uh, are at, it's a controlled intersection. So the MUTCD limits the type of signage that you go there. I believe right. that the crosswalk that you're referring to is, is not controlled. I believe that that's kind of considered a mid-block crosswalk, and therefore you have the flashing lights that go across the street. Someone pushes the button? Yes. Um, however, I will also say that We've received a lot of complaints from drivers who say that those lights actually blind them. And they complain that the lights need to be removed because they create a hazard for them to actually see uh, children. Uh, and I, I do believe that they are a maintenance problem. We've had consistent issues with this crosswalk and those, those lights. So it probably would not be our recommendation that that, was, that is the type of, of uh, of safety system that we would install going forward. My preference would be uh, sort of like on the right-hand side here, you have uh, this sort of signage on a pole with that bar of flashing lights and then have it on the opposing side of the street as well. Those actually catch your attention. You see them because they flash brightly in a random pattern. But the crosswalks, we have received complaints that they blind people. Thank you for that clarification. Mr. Mayor, to your point or to your question, um, I, I have no problem with uh, your suggestion about having a special meeting to discuss these uh, issues in detail. I just would not want the signs being ordered or the pilot program to be hindered in any way because if indeed those are gonna be coming and activity can start by the end of this year, 
let's go full steam ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to bring that up. Let's order your signs, put some signs up where it makes sense, and then in, when we get together or whenever in February, March, um, it could be an update, or you can talk about here are some other ideas, Montero, we think it's some attention, so we'll, we'll do that in February, March. Sure, absolutely. Meantime, put them up, Vernon's D, will be the pilot project, and then the signs at other, uh, other sites. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, so again, Mr. Mayor, safe routes. If I may for, make one comment, hold on uh, for a second. Hold on for a second, to, Bill. Hold on for a second. Sure. Bill. So again, uh, this will be for both safe routes and for local road safety when we come back in March, and also putting the signs up. Okay, Bill, right. it's yours. I would concur with you about a special study session on that. Also, in looking at, sadly, the tragedy at Vernon, you could put in all these lights and flashing devices you want, and I think we need them. But let's remember the tragedy was not because of speed. It was a high profile vehicle in which the driver could not see over the front of the vehicle to see the child. We need to start looking at high profile vehicles as well. You know, the, we can put all these devices in, it's still not going to stop somebody who can't see over the front of their vehicle to the road. So just a cautionary tale on that as well. Thank you, Bill. Um, before we, I think after this, we'll go, we'll go with public comment, but some other items I was going to bring up, uh, broadband, for example, uh, Ed, we're, t we're looking at, uh, doing a broadband project in Montclair. I know we got state grants and now we got the infrastructure bill and, uh, from Washington DC adopted. I know you've, I believe you is an IT that's looking at implementing or putting together a plan for uh, expanding broadband Montclair? Yes, well, and we've actually been installing the um, uh, fiber optic cable as we do street improvements. Right. And that will be an ongoing uh, process. So uh, the monies that we have received from the ARP, uh, from the federal government, the American Rescue Plan, that money will be, it's one of the few things that we can allocate the money towards is broadband expansion. So that will be a process going forward. And what's the main goal of the broadband? Uh, to provide a no-cost uh, Wi-Fi access service to residents throughout the community, particularly those in pocket areas of the community where fiber optic currently is not reaching or where they have a very weak Wi-Fi signal. And so I believe our, the plan you're looking at, staff's looking at, is those areas of, have a disadvantage in, in terms of Wi-Fi. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. My next one here, I know police chiefs here, is vehicle license readers. Have we looked at vehicle license readers? I know eight other agencies have done that. They'll put them at certain locations. Is this something, uh, uh, maybe, Ed, you can answer the question. Is this something that the city's looking at as well, staff are looking at? Well, the chief actually plans on doing a presentation at the next city council meeting during department head presentations, and he has a very unique program that he wants to discuss with you. It's not the same thing as what you are discussing, but we believe that this new system that he will be talking about will greatly accentuate our ability to identify uh, perpetrators in vehicles as they are trying to transver transver tra traverse through the community uh, and seek an outlet away from the place where they committed a crime. So let him have that opportunity at the next council meeting. And, and I know uh, Ben wants to speak. Uh, the other one is Central Avenue. Is that circum circum circumcised Central Avenue? It was a long time ago. Is it still is or no? Circum Central Avenue? Avenue is, well, yes. In fact, according to San Bernardino County Transportation Authority, uh, Montclair has uh, basically about a 98% rating. Uh, compared to all of the other cities in the county as far as okay. synchronized uh, signal outs, uh, through the community. And the reason why I brought, I'm bringing up these three here, and I'm happy to hear that the, all, we were participating in all three, is at uh, SBCTA, which I serve, uh, uh, Supervisor Hagman's created an emerg emerging technology ad hoc, which I'm a member of, and these are the three projects that we have talked about. Actually, we had a meeting about this today. Um, and the idea, I don't know if the chief likes this, but the idea is to have a central system, a central location with monitors. So for example, vehicle license readers and there's an incident there, there's a facility that you know, a staff that, that monitors all that. And so if somebody's going from Montclair to Ontario, right now you can't communicate too well, but you'll be, there'll be somebody that can see that. It'll take place in live action. The signalization on Central Avenue, if there's an issue, there's maintenance issues, they'll be responsible to uh, 
and ensure that's taken care of, and also plan to expand broadband in, in, in our county. So uh, uh, I, I believe there'll be a meeting in the future. You may be invited, city manager, or start to attend. And I think the, did you go to the last city manager meeting for uh, at SBCTA? Uh, no, we had a major uh, uh, meeting that day that I couldn't get away yeah, from. Yeah, and I believe that was one of the topics of, of discussion at that meeting. Go ahead, Ben. Piggyback again on another issue you brought up, Mr. Mayor. With respect to the license plate readers, I thought we approved an expenditure for some sort of um, service with respect to license plate reading, and, a, and a, so I'm confused. I thought we already had that in place, or are we using a... Graffiti? No, 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 license plate reading uh, devices. I know we approved it as a council, I want to say maybe in March or April of this year. We do have readers, yes, and I think what you approved was uh, the old readers were no longer functioning. If you want to talk about it, go ahead. And then a general question after that, Mr. Mayor. So I'll just hit some quick highlights since it's not really agendized or anything, but the license plate reader program that you're talking about was basically our access to the vigilant database system, which is a license plate reader system, but we do not have cameras up in our community, such as at intersections and things like that. The cameras that we did have were from the PIPS camera, which are also license plate reader cameras, but that system has become obsolete and is no longer or operational. Those were cameras that were mounted on our patrol cars. Right. The vigilant camera system is something that we were trying to pursue. There's been talk about that over the years, but it's very expensive. It also requires the fiber optic in the infrastructure for it to be most efficient and operational but we are moving into a different program which many other communities are already using as well. That is the flock cameras, and that's what I intended to talk about at the department head presentation at this upcoming council meeting. That's a project we are already kind of looking at and moving on, um, just to let you know that we're looking at doing about 40 cameras within the community, and that's something we're expecting to probably get up and running uh, by the first of the year or thereabouts, and it'll be a two-year program. So, okay. But I'll talk more in detail about it then so that it's actually on the agenda. No, so. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the brief explanation, Chief. All right. So, uh, Mr. Mayor. Ahead. Go, ahead, uh, go ahead, Ben. I mean, go ahead, Bill. Let me. Two quick items. When you're talking about signalization, I do have a lot of complaints from people about the red lights being too long, the green lights being too short, especially at times when the street may not be congested. I know Supervisor Hagman has espoused his belief in technology. I would hope we could start looking at demand lights. I'm not worried about what it means for other cities. I've heard things such as, well, our neighbors may not like it. That's not my concern. My concern are the residents of Montclair. If we can start to look at demand lights, where they've been used in other locales across this country, they have reduced accidents. They have improved traffic flow. And they have been able to regulate better the speeds because people aren't speeding up to get through that last half second of the green light. So I hope we would look at that. And then a question I should have asked earlier, but on the Arrow Highway under uh, utility undergrounding, one, Arrow Highway is a major street. I take it every day. Benson, north to Arrow Highway. I pass through numerous communities after I exit Montclair, but it's a major street. It's congested in the morning westbound and very congested in the evening eastbound. When we're doing this utility undergrounding, we need to let our neighbors know in Upland and Claremont, but how do we intend to deal with the traffic flow? Please don't tell me we're going to ask people to use the freeway. The freeway is very congested. Well, it's a project that we would obviously have to coordinate with Southern California Edison. There would be the contractor or whether they contracted out to another vendor to do the undergrounding. Um, but they do try to limit the impact on uh, traffic on the freeway. Uh, certainly a project of this nature, they're gonna have to do it during the course of the day. Uh, but I do assure you that it's probably going to be towards the tail end 
of uh, the lease revenue bond expenditures and the freeway project probably will be completed, completed. And that's only because it takes years to get a permit from Southern California Edison to do this kind of a project. So we're not anticipating that this would probably start any earlier than 2024. And we expect that the freeway would be open at that time. Hopefully- The, the freeway is still gonna be congested. The concern's going to have to be narrowing this down to one lane as they do this and the potential for accidents. I would hope that we could, if necessary, put signs that will route people to other east-west arterials. I know we don't like it, but it may be the only way to go because the freeway will continue to be congested due to the fact that a lot of people will not use the toll lane. So I hope that's 2024, we start to look very critically at what we're going to do. Yep. Arrow is a major street and there's no other way to move the traffic through the city and we're going to have to be very, very vigilant on this and find a way to move people through. If it means rerouting them to other east-west arterials, then we need to do so. Yes, you're correct, and that is a- Exclusive of the freeway. Yes, and that- Exclusive of the- Oh, sorry, go ahead. Exclusive of the freeway, because the freeway will be congested. The moment we finish this project, that freeway will be congested. And it is a typical uh, process that when we do a major street improvement such as this, we do try to route traffic onto alternative uh, routes. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I want to see if we have any members of the public that wishes to speak again. If you're in the audience, you'll fill out a blue card, or in this case, if you want to raise your hand and you can fill it afterwards to speak. And if you're on Zoom, you'll raise your hand, electronic hand. And if you're on the phone, you'll hit star nine. So I'll ask the city clerk this time if we have any speakers. Bruce Culp has his hand raised. Bruce Culp. I never heard of Bruce Culp. <laughs> Bruce Culp, are you there? Well, hopefully you've heard me now. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you, Bruce. It's okay. all yours. Uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, this is a very uh, you know, good meeting and um, lots of great questions uh, from the council to the the staff and I uh, applaud the staff for the wonderful presentation. Thank you guys so much for putting a lot of thought and care into prioritizing and putting this uh, this list together. Um, one thing uh, is the presentation uh, did not show up on the Zoom very well. Um, it was cut off on all the edges and so forth. So I was wondering first if we could have that put posted on the, the uh, Montclair website publicly so we can all take time to review it. Um, Secondly, uh, long term, uh, you know, we've taken care of a lot of the residents' concerns, but uh, city concerns. Um, we haven't had a major earthquake in quite a while. We're going to have one eventually. It's going to happen. So my thought is, is um, we need to have some um, disaster recovery stuff. You know, one thing the city hasn't done is um, uh, has gone and put solar panels all around the uh, pub all around the city um, properties. Uh, in the parking lots outside that um, city hall there uh, that needs uh, solar with uh, battery backup, which helps in the event of a, uh, uh, you know, a major disaster. You'll still be able to collect energy and electricity and store it and use it in the event of emergency. Probably the only place I've seen it is maybe the parking lot of the police department. Uh, the fire departments don't have it. Any of the city properties, I haven't really seen a lot of solar. So I would ask that the city think about if we have any over uh, funds uh, that are available after uh, state and federal uh, pitch in, uh, maybe putting some solar all around the city, as well as um, starting to purchase electric vehicles uh, where they can be purchased. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have no another speaker? No, nope, that was it. That was it. Okay, so we are now finished wrapping up this workshop. And uh, so I believe the direction that we're gonna give staff this evening is uh, overall support of the project of $47.7 million. Obviously there's some flexibility, the price tag of this, some stuff might be more, might be less as we progress. Staff will keep us updated as we, as we move forward, but this is the template we'll be working off. And then we did discuss the safe routes and local road safety program. Those will come back to the council uh, next, early next year. In the meantime, staff will move forward with improvements of uh, signs. And of course, uh, Vernon Middle School uh, will be the pilot project. So I, let's just do this so uh, that we uh, move, make a motion to uh, authorize staff um, 
to proceed with the projects in, in, in the presentation and then also come back at a later date uh, on the safety routes, local, ra local road safety uh, program. So I'll make, that's the motion I make. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there a se first and second? Let's go ahead and have a roll call vote then. Okay, Council Member Lopez? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Johnson? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Rue? Aye. Aye. Mayor Dutre? Aye. So let's adopt a 5 0, and then obviously all these problems will we'll be seen the next few years, next three years at least, all these projects coming to the City Council in different formats, including awards of contracts. So we are now to the end of the agenda, and I just want to say this, uh, I don't know how many veterans we have in the room. I know, Ed, you're a veteran, Air Force veteran. Uh, any more? I'm sorry, John Hamilton, is a, uh, he's a Marine veteran, and... Uh, happy birthday, Marines. Happy birthday, Marines, and then I want to say my wife is an Army veteran, and then I'm not sure if anybody who's on Zoom is a veteran, but we want to we want to say thank you to all those veterans and obviously happy Veterans Day. With that, yes, Mr. Mayor, can okay. I make a quick announcement? Uh, this Friday night, 7:30 p.m., Montclair High School football men's football will be competing in the second round of CIF. We are hosting the game against San Gabriel. Tickets are on sale online, um, and the Booster Club has invited the council to attend and the um, announcer will introduce the council to those in attendance. So anyhow, just want to let the public know we'd like to have a good show of support at the high school game for our boys. Go Cavaliers. And Mr. Mayor, I will be out of town that day. Yeah, and I'll be at the football game 7, 7.30 or 7 o'clock? They changed it to 7.30, oh, 7, I thought. 7.30 now, okay. Well, let's just say 7 to play it safe. Okay. Uh, before I adjourn the meeting, I know that uh, uh, Bruce Cope, uh, I thought, brought up one good idea. Let's get this presentation on the website if we can. I think it's good for the public to see this and then we can advertise it on our Facebook site and so members of the public can review it themselves. With that, we're adjourned. 7 p.m., sorry. 7 p.m. Yes. Thank you. We're adjourned.